With the long wait done and with the reviews that have already poured in, Ghost of Tsushima is finally here. Players have been eagerly waiting to get into the beautiful land of Tsushima, but before that, we'd like to share with you some of the learnings we got from playing the game. At the moment, I've quite nearly 100%ed this game, and as I take a look back, there are a few things that I wish I knew from the get-go. Things that could have saved me a lot of time, or things that could have made my experience with the game smoother or more optimized. Take note, Ghost of Tsushima does encourage you to play however you want, and the following points I'm about to make are simply just recommendations and preferences that may help improve the experience as you finally get to dive in. That said, my name is Rob from Ungeek, and here are 10 tips I wish I knew before playing Ghost of Tsushima. Number 1. Choosing Samurai Cinema as your gameplay experience at the very beginning of the game, you get to set your play experience and language settings. Maybe this is the anime lover in me, but choosing this option just kind of feels more authentic. Sure, there are issues with lip syncing, but in exchange for the nuances of their tone and how they address it, I think that the lip sync issue is a small thing that's easily forgivable. I will say though that the one downside to this mode is how the game doesn't have subtitles for ambient dialogue. So unless you speak Japanese, you won't be able to understand ambient and PC dialogue while exploring. But hey, still worth it in my opinion. Number 2. Choose your difficulty settings wisely. It's worth noting that choosing a difficulty setting for Tsushima is not exactly a question of how punishing you want the game to be. What it does do, however, is give you a more rewarding combat experience. The danger of Ghost of Tsushima is that if you set the game to a difficulty that's lower than your skill level, combat may end up just being boring as it'll get too easy. So if you're an experienced player, you may want to switch it over to hard instead of normal. Don't worry, deaths in Ghost of Tsushima aren't really frustrating. In the many times that I died to enemies, I usually got a feeling of, okay, fair, let's try again, rather than once of frustration. So be sure to just adjust to what you think will work best for you. And don't be afraid to experiment. Number 3. Don't rush the game The lore inside this game as well as the visual feel of it is something that's really worth taking in. Take time to enjoy the sights, to walk through the environment, to explore, and to listen to the stories of the game. While Ghost of Tsushima isn't exactly the type of sandbox game where you can do everything and anything, Sucker Punch's approach to the game was made to allow for a deeper level of immersion. The graphical and narrative highs of this game are really, really high, so take time to just let it all soak in. Number 4. Always do Mythic Quests as soon as they're available. Through the course of the adventure, you'll unlock Mythic Quests. Quests. These mythic quests are the most stylistic quests that border on the fantastical nature and capitalizes on the fact that these missions are legends and tales. Each mythic quest comes with its own introduction that's done in a very stylistic way and properly sets the mood for each mission. Rest assured, these are some of the best quests in the game in terms of narrative, visual, execution, and even rewards, so I cannot emphasize enough that as soon as one pops up, it would be best for you to head on over and do that mythic quest. Number 5. Learn Deflection and Evolving Tactic Skills First As you level up in Ghost of Tsushima, you'll be getting skill points, and you'll ask yourself, what would be the best way to spend these? I highly recommend to use your first points in either the deflection or the evolving tactics tree, as these would have some of the best improvements to your combat and general quality of life. Deflection skills will focus on your parry ability and will make previously unblockable enemy attacks into ones that you can effectively deflect. Not only that, but this tree will also give you health and resolve rewards for making successful parries. Evolving tactics, on the other hand, improve a bunch of notable things that make your experience more enjoyable. There are a bunch of choices here, and I would recommend prioritizing the ability to roll when you land from a jump. This allows you to drop from higher places without damage, which grants you some additional mobility and traversal options. Next to prioritize would be the skills that allow you to thin the numbers of your enemies quickly. Depending on your playstyle, you can choose from increasing the amount of enemies you can kill during a standoff, increasing how many you can assassinate as part of a chain, or how long you can stay in concentration mode while using a bow. 
The other abilities are okay, but in my opinion, are significantly less important than the ones that I mentioned. But once again, this is all up to preference. Number 6. Upgrade your Tanto for quicker assassinations As you may already know, Ghost of Tsushima's story shows the two sides of Chin Sakai. One that values honor and one that does whatever it takes. Of course, since Jin is primarily a samurai first, the game does show you that it takes a bit for Jin to get used to the ghostly ways. His assassinations will initially feel too raw and rough, which could definitely cost you in combat when you're trying to be stealthy, but Jin is taking forever, shiving a person to death. So it's definitely worth noting that as you accumulate materials to upgrade your weapons, you may want to consider upgrading your Tanto first. For one, the main sword has many levels of upgrades and all of which just raises the amount of damage you can do. While the Tanto only has a few levels and each level will significantly speed up your assassinations, making for much smoother stealth operations. Number 7. Inari Shrines are worth your time As you go about the world, it will only be a matter of time until you come across the goodest of boys that inhabit Tsushima Island. Follow these foxes and they'll lead you to the shrines that you can honor. I really advise that you do follow these guys whenever you get the chance, as for one, doing so only takes so little time to complete, and two, the rewards are definitely worth it. I won't spoil the higher rewards, but the first few unlock charm slots that can definitely turn the tides of battle to your favor. Number 8. The Traveler's Attire is a Completionist's Best Friend Admittedly, I'm the type of gamer who tries to complete as much of the game during my first playthrough. So when I finally discovered the Traveler's Attire, I felt like it was such a godsend. Not only does this reveal more of the map as you explore, but this also causes your controller to vibrate when there are secrets nearby. These secrets, especially records, are really worth getting as they give you additional lore and insight as to what's going on in the world around you. The most interesting ones I found were about your main enemy, the Khan, and seeing these correspondences definitely add to building his character. But does that mean you should only wear the Traveler's attire all day every day? Absolutely not, as the other armored pieces are definitely worth your time as well. I will suggest putting it on once you've cleared an area or when you're just chasing after question marks on your map. Number 9. Only fully level up armor that you plan to use frequently Early on in the game, you will meet armorers. These people will upgrade your armor sets in exchange for materials. Each armor will have three higher tiers that you can upgrade it into. And while sufficient looting in this game will make sure that you have enough materials to do your upgrades, I do recommend only doing the last upgrade tier for the armor pieces that you intend to use frequently. While the second and third tier upgrades not only boost your stats but upgrade the aesthetics of your armor as well, the fourth tier gives no aesthetic upgrades. Instead, the highest tier will always just be stat increases and these cost silk as well. The thing with silk is that silk is not a usually lootable resource and it will only be found as rewards to certain missions. So do be mindful where you spend it. And number 10, don't worry about map clearing. Now, for completionists like myself, you'll be tempted to start doing exploratory horseback runs on the map just to take out the fog of war. You know, for completion's sake. But I will tell you that at the end of every act, you'll have the chance to liberate an area of the map. And once you do so, that whole area will be cleared of the fog of war, which will also reveal the question marks that you can explore. So yeah. Ghost of Tsushima makes exploration really convenient, so I'd say save yourself the trouble and skip on those map revealing explorations, unless you really want to. And that's our list. Hope that these tips will help you out as you enjoy the wonderful game that is Ghost of Tsushima. Till next time everyone, keep on gaming.